So, like, all right, I've been dreaming about getting to the UFC for so long, yeah? You get into the UFC, you're in the cage. I'm, like, taking in the scenery while I'm fighting. Like, as long as you keep that end goal in mind, you've always got something to aim for and a direction to go. I just I come out of the bars and got shot. Failure is failure when you accept, accept it. Failure is, like, people say you can fail, but try again and you'll succeed. If you want to achieve your goals, you have to, you have to step out of your comfort zone. Um, and challenge yourself. All it said was, can he fight on this date, which was four weeks from the time. Um, and obviously I thought, it was, I didn't think it was for me at the first, and then when he told it was for me, it was just like, like, it was just like a big shock. Yeah, it's Lerone Murphy fighting out of Manchester. Um, I'm an MMA fighter fighting in the UFC. Um, obviously people who don't live in Manchester won't know what it's like growing up around here. What was it like for you growing up? What was your experiences like? It was crazy, man. Like from like 13 years old, it was crazy. Like I was running around with the boys and stuff, um, doing all sorts of stuff, cars, everything, um, fighting in town with boys and stuff like that. Just, just like what boys just stuff in it. Just what teenagers do. Obviously, you said in your early days you're kind of getting up to mischief and stuff like that. And some of these mischievous, you'd say they wouldn't have like the self-discipline and and the mindset to go on to be a fighter. Did you? Even in your younger years, did you kind of know that you was going to go on to do something great? Not really. I used to play football, so I had the discipline in football, but um, I blew my knee out at 16 and that's when I stopped doing any sports for a few years and then that's when it's like, that's when like things got worse, do you know what I mean? Because I, no, I had no discipline, I had nothing to, um, I had no goals to set, I had nothing to work towards, so I was just kind of gallivanting. There's many people that you meet that um, are good at a sport or even professionally and they get an injury and it just psychologically, to come back from it, they just can't do it. When you got that injury, obviously you would have played football probably day in, day out, big thing for you. Did you think to yourself, you know what, I can't, can't be arsed at the moment? Yeah, I, I never thought I'd do any kind of sport again because my knee was weak for years and then um, I started MMA and I was always worried about my knee, worried about my knee, but um, I met my physio, Naz, and he ended up um, building up the strength in my legs and stuff again. So from then it was sweet. And then obviously I didn't think I'd get this far. I was just training for fun. From your early years of, of your life, can you think of anybody that was kind of a, like a real influence or somebody who really shaped you into the person you are today? My biggest influence was probably, not, not really in the younger years. In the older years, I used to look up to my uncle Oliver um, Harrison and what he's done. He's, he was a fighter. Um, he's raised his son to be a fighter. He's had all these big professional fighters and stuff, and that's that's what I wanted to go on to do. Do you think for people out there who don't have somebody who's kind of made it in whatever field, do you think that's a massively important thing to to know somebody who can show you that it's doable? Yeah, of course, because it, it, it's then it's real. It's real. You can relate to it then instead of like, because I didn't know anybody that made it like from my from my area. So it's also on TV. So to me, it was like it felt unrealistic, and then until I was around like professional people, um, then, it's, then it become more doable. Can you kind of describe the company that you was in when you was younger compared to the company that you was in when you started to make it and become a UFC fighter? Yeah, different, different type of company. Like obviously when, when you start training and stuff, you're around people that train every day and stuff like that. They ain't got time to do other stuff. And obviously when, when you're younger, everyone's like on different, different type of stuff so you have a different mindset you, even the day-to-day -day conversations are different um, everything's different the mindset's different um, and when you get when you're around people that are doing sports it's, it's it's better it's better there's less stress what would you say to people who kind of maybe surround themselves with people who don't provide them with an environment where they can you know progress or feel successful how would they break out of something like that Depends where you want to go in life, and if you want to do well, then it's, it's all about the circle and the company you keep. Um, you need to you need people that are gonna motivate you, um, and always want the best for you at the same time as well. You spoke about it in the past, and it's it's up to you how much detail you go into. But realistically, you should never have been in the UFC. You probably shouldn't be sitting here right now. There's something that a lot of people would struggle to come back from. Something really negative. Yeah which kind of influenced a real positive change for you in your life when you got shot. Mm. How did that affect you psychologically and what happened? So at the time, it was more like, it, it took like more of a negative path first. Um, and obviously I was waking up angry, going to bed angry, I was angry all the time. And then like, 
later on after training and stuff like that, it, it kind of turned that into a positive and gave me more of a drive to do better. So that kind of anger at the beginning, yeah. was you aware that it was kind of taking you down the wrong path? And how did you then use that anger to like, put you down the positive path? Yeah, of course, of course, but it's just like, it's, it's more of a time thing. Um, it's more of a time thing and like obviously who you surround yourself with and obviously if, you, if you're if you in the wrong company why you're thinking about them things then bad things can happen and obviously it can go the other way, you can end up in jail, you can end up anywhere, you can end up dead um, but phew, I ended up getting into sport luckily. How did, how did that transition happen? How did it go from obviously being shot and then transitioning into MMA fighting? What was the kind of steps that you took? Uh, I just started training. At first, yeah, obviously, I didn't, I didn't want to be a professional. I just started training because I enjoyed watching it. I've been watching it for years. Um, I started training and then I started liking it. I ended up getting, having my first amateur fight after about, I think it was like six months or something, maybe. About six months, um, I had my first amateur fight. I loved that. I ended up going to have another amateur fight. That was an even better fight. And then I just started thinking, this is what I want to do. Um, so later on, I think I fought for an amateur title after that fight, and then I had one more and turned professional. And then I went to America actually. That was like the big, biggest turning point for me. I went to America in 2000 and either four, four, 15, 2015, and I stayed with um, Dominic Cruz, and obviously he's a world champion. And then from then, it was just like seeing his lifestyle, and then that's just what I wanted to be in it. I just seen how he was living, he was living, it, it, obviously it looked to me as he was stress-free and it's not, but obviously it's, it's not that easy, but he had like a pool in his garden, it was, it's just sick. That must have been a big change for you, obviously, living in Manchester mm. and then going to a gym in like your local area to then going to live with a world champion. Mm. Did it seem surreal, but then when you was there it seemed achievable? It didn't seem surreal because it, he was just like super down to earth, do you know what I'm saying? And like, and even like all the other fighters in the gym, Jeremy Stevens, um, a couple of other UFC fighters, and you're just around them and they're just normal. So it's just like, and then you're training with them as well. So it's like, you know it's doable. I, I was amateur then, and I'm doing rounds with Dominic Cruz, even Ross Pearson was there. Um, I'm doing, doing sparring rounds with them, and just from then I knew it was doable. A lot of people would kind of, um think that, especially as an amateur, like how would you go and train with a professional? How did you even get the call up to go and train over there? Mm, I, I went with a guy I knew um, to, to train over there, but like even in this gym, the amateurs and the professionals train together. Um, obviously, if you're at a certain level, but nowadays the amateurs are just as good as professionals. Yeah. When you came away from, when you came away from training over there in 2015, yeah. you came back to Manchester, your mindset completely different then? Did you know what you needed to do? Totally different, totally different. And obviously his, his um, work rate showed me like the work rate you need to be at the top. Um, and I've, I've, I've took that away, away from that trip and I've, and I've put the work in every day. Um, I think I had my first professional fight after I come back from America. Um, and I ended up breaking my hand in that. I was out for a few months after that, but I just knew where I, wanted, where I needed to get to. Can you describe like the difference in work rate that you noticed from you going over there and then coming back and then what you needed to do to implement it? And not just the, the training methods, but kind of the mindset, the psyche that you needed, yeah. Yeah, um, he's probably one of the hardest workers in the world, so to match that, it's different. Like he does, he's in camp all the time, but for me, it's just like, it's working hard in the areas you need to work at and working smart as well, um, training smart getting the right bodies in as well. It's all about the bodies as well. Working hard in the right areas. I, I quite like that. I'm working smart. Some people can just, you know, bash their head against the wall and think they're going to make progression and exactly. actually they plateau. Yeah, yeah. People think like just going hard every day, every session, doing 20k runs and all that. This is going to make you a better, it's not going to make you a better fighter. Um, obviously, you need to do your base cardio and stuff, but it's just about, it's, a, it's about the technical bits really and then, and then obviously the rounds. The working smart aspect of it, how do you work smart? If somebody, you're going to give that advice to somebody, what would you say they should implement and do? Working smart, it's all about knowing your body as well. So knowing when to take time off, knowing when to take an easy session um, and obviously having the right coaching people around you that are going to find the holes in your game and work, work the right drills to perfect them.
So obviously you said that you came back from an injury in the hand after your first professional fight and then you went, is it 8-0? Nine, I'm 9-0 nine, oh, no, no, nine, now. 9-0, nine, nine, but before nine. you got the call up to the UFC was it? 8-0, yeah, yeah. 8-0, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that even come about? How did that opportunity land on your doorstep? So, yeah, obviously I won a few fights and I was in Jamaica. I was in Jamaica with my family, all inclusive, eating heavy, come back massive. I think it must have been about 82 kg when I come back. Uh, and I think I trained, I trained for two days and then I got a, I got a, call, I got a message off my coach on the Tuesday saying I've got a, I've got a, no. It was like it was like a message of Sean Shelby um, with a match. Can can he? It, all it said was can he fight on this date, which was four weeks from the time. Um, and obviously, I thought it was, I didn't think it was for me at the first. And then when he told it was for me, it was just like like it's just like a big shock kind of thing. A lot of people would probably knock that opportunity back. A lot of people wouldn't as well because they're not ready. They don't have time to prepare. Mm. How important is it to just kind of even if you're not ready physically, be able to mentally prepare yourself to do it and then just get the job done. No, I had no other option. Like you just never know in this game. Like that you might you might knock that opportunity back and it might never come round. I've seen it happen before. So uh, if you have to just take them opportunities, both hands really. I I only need four weeks to get ready for a fight, really anyway. Um I didn't have no injuries at the time. I was just heavy. It's just water weight really, I would have burnt off. You um You've had quite a not. You've had a quite a short journey in MMA compared to some people. Mm. You managed to go to the UFC and fight twice, and you're going to be fighting on UFC again in the future. Mm. What is the difference between somebody like you who's only been doing it for six or seven years, and you've got to that stage compared to people who've been doing it to twenty years who'd never reach it? Uh, obviously, t talent comes into it, but at the same time, I've I've been putting in the shifts. Like I've been training hard, hard, hard. Like from from when I started, I've been training near enough every day no time off, even when, even when I broke my hand, I was working around it. Um, I just been putting in extra shifts. So a lot of them people that I've been doing like 15 years, they're like half-hearted, like on and off, on and off, on and off. I've just been, I've just been at it. You put in that shift every day, but mm -hmm. it's only recently you've got to the UFC, you was never promised it. Mm -hmm. How do you manage to keep putting in that shift when you don't know the reward's gonna be kind of as big as you'd want it to be, or maybe it won't pay off for you? How do you do it without knowing that? I always knew I was going to get there at some point um, from, from when I turned professional and stuff. But even when, I, when, I've been, when I've been inspiring like UFC people, UFC fighters, um, I knew I had the ability to get there someday. I just needed obviously the right fights, the right path, the right journey. But at, some, at one point, uh, at one point I, it did, it did, I did have a few doubts because I couldn't get the right fights. And then I was, end up, I was, going, to, I was going to sign to another promotion. Um, and luckily I just, I just waited out a bit. Everybody has that moment where, you know, they feel like they're new at something, maybe they're not going to get it, but everybody's got that moment where it clicks and they think, you know what, you know what, I think I can do this, or yeah. maybe this is definitely for me. Can you describe, is there one single moment you can think of where you think, you know what, I know I was going to be in the UFC or even UFC champion? Mm. Probably... Probably after my, like my first few amateur fights, you know, that's where that's where I kind of thought I kind of thought yeah I can do this because I, that was only like a year and I was I think I fought a guy that was fighting for a good few years as well. Do you know what I mean? And I, I ended up beating him. And he was massive. That's when I was fighting at welterweight. These guys were like six foot two. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but going to America was 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 the breaking point for me, definitely. That kind of shattered the illusion. Yeah, definitely. Like just being around it, just being around fighters, um, training in a proper camp where you're doing like the proper training and stuff. It just like, then it was real to me. You started MMA 21, 22. Yeah. You're 29 now. 29. So realistically, kind of six years, you've, you've not been able to waste any time. Your words, you've put a shift in on a daily basis. What's your daily routine like? How do you put that shift in? My daily routine is like out of camp, I do one session a day, six days a week, maybe some more just light sessions of running in the evening and stuff, but like I, I, I definitely do one session a day. Um, and then in camp, we double them up, um, maybe pad work in the evening, conditioning, whatever else I need to be doing. But it's just been, it's just, even when I, when I first started, then I was doing more two sessions a day, just standing, I was in the gym all day, every day. 
Just living and breathing it. Living and breathing it. Um, I used to have my good mate Damo. He's, he's not really training anymore now, but we used to just go in the gym, get the keys, go in the gym and just be in there all day, just sparring or whatever, wrestling or whatever. And that's where that's where my level grew the most. Would you say the early that early beginning stage where you were just living it, but you still live and breathe it now? Yeah, yeah. But even, even the early stage? I was literally living in the gym, just in the gym, just training all the time, picking up. And I used to watch a lot of tape as well. I used to watch a lot of fights and just learn from other fighters. Then coming to the gym and kind of replicate Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come in and drill it. Like, I just see... Um, John. I used to watch a lot of John Jones. I used to watch a lot of his techniques and just come in the gym and drill him myself. That's interesting because you strike me as the kind of person, I said this to you before, where nothing really phases you. But I watch you train today and... I, I seen you kind of self-critique yourself afterwards, mm. and I know from watching uh, different fighters and, and different fight tapes, you'll look at something that somebody does, and then you'll try and bring that into your style, and then you'll critique it and try and technically kind of craft it out. Yeah. You seem like you're the kind of person who's self-disciplined yourself. Mm-hmm. How important is that? I've always been like that, you know. Like as soon as I get something wrong, even like when we spar, I video my spars and I go back and I look and I pick at little, pick at little pieces to fix. Um, but today was just like I was grappling, but I've not grappled for a, for a bit, so I just felt a bit rusty and I was, I was like getting swept in some positions where I shouldn't have been, and it's just like just didn't feel the best today. You're describing something that probably everybody goes through, mm. and and sometimes that's enough to make people, you know, what say I I quit, I can't be bothered. Yeah. I've had a couple of bad sessions back to back or I've had a couple of bad fights back to back or even a couple of bad days back to back. How do you tell people to get through them days? For me, you just got to have an end goal in sight at all times, an end goal. So a lot of, you're going to have a lot of bad days in this sport. Um, bad fights are going to come like it's part of the sport. But as long as you keep that end goal in mind, you've always got something to aim for and a direction to go in. People out there who are thinking, OK, goal, but how do I create a goal? How did you go about creating a goal? How would you give people advice for that? You've got to know what you want from life, really and truly. And obviously, like, I'm not just doing it for myself. I've got a little boy, I've got a family that, that um, I obviously want to get bet in, in a better financial position. So it's not just about me. So for me, I wake up every day with a goal and I'm going to reach that goal. You broke away from people after kind of what happened with the incident and, and you kind of dedicated yourself to the gym. Did you get many people who doubted you or, or hated on you? And if so, always you're always going to get that when you when you're doing well. Um, you're always going to get that, but that, that doesn't phase me at all. Like I've got one goal in mind, as I just said before, and so nothing will really take my mind off that or get in the way of that. You're basically saying then, if your goal's strong enough, it, it will drag you through anything. Yeah, of course, one hundred percent. Like you just be focused on what, what you want from life and just stick to that. Whatever hurdles you come past, just just stick to that and you'll get there. From what you've told me so far, especially about watching tapes, living in the gym, and then even filming you, you know, your sparring sessions or your pad work sessions and watching them back, you, you could say that you're obsessed with it. And obsession is something which can really, you know, it's, you're giving it an ultimate amount of focus over a long period of time. Would you say that you became obsessed with the fight game and, and bettering yourself like that? 100%, 100% like... It's mad, like, you go, you go to bed thinking about techniques and drills and just stuff like that. It's definitely an obsession. It's definitely an obsession. Even when you're, like, you're just out and about, you're just, like, thinking, oh, I should be training, or even you're not do- when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, you're thinking about fights and stuff like that. It's mad. It's, like, it is an obsession, definitely. Can you ever tell me about a time in training, not even in a fight, but in training, where it's been, it's been really hard? And maybe even after that training session you thought about quitting or a time we have thought about quitting, but one, one that sticks out in mind? Probably a bad sparring session where I've probably sparred somebody at a lower level and maybe even lost a round and been like, like how is this happening? Do you get what I'm saying? I'm fighting at the top level in the world and I'm getting, I've, I've just lost a round. But it, I've never thought about quitting because of that. The only, time I've, the only time I've thought about, like, should I be doing this is when I get injured and stuff like that. And, and that, that drops your morale level a lot and you're just like... Like, how am I going to, because I get injured a lot and I'm like, how am I going to get as far as I need to get back when I'm not training? That's it. You got called up to the UFC, had your first fight, the guy's name you fought, what was the guy's name again? Zabira Tukukov. Quite a bit of a hard name to pronounce, comes from the same camp as Khabib. Um, What was that experience like, obviously going to Spike Island, was that on Spike Island, that one? Fight Island. Fight Island, yeah. And, um, And obviously going to the event and 
in the first round you got dropped within the first minute, yeah. right? People yeah, must yeah, have been yeah. thinking. First minute, yeah. That 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 whole experience was just crazy. I just I was just ready to fight. I just knew I was just going there to fight. A lot of people just think, oh, it's my first UFC fight. Just get a fight under your belt and you've got your contract and that's it. But I was going there to win. I always go there to win. I never just make up the numbers. So when we got in there, um, obviously the weigh-ins were first and all the crowd was like screaming for him. So I just knew, I knew it would be a hostile territory. Like I knew straight away it would be like, when the fight's on, everyone's going to be cheering for him. But I was ready for that. That like, give me a different type of fire as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, as soon as I walked out, I just knew that's it was sick. Do you think you'd prefer you prefer that kind of animosity towards you? Yeah, definitely. I've not, obviously, I've not fought um, in London or Manchester yet with a big crowd, so I don't know how it will feel. But um, when the crowd's against you, it does give you a different fire. It's like a point to prove. Yeah, point to prove. I was just thinking I'm going to knock your guy out now. You get dropped in the first like minute of the fight. Um, decent punch. On yeah, the it's, good, it's a good shot. I was off. I threw. I threw a sloppy low kick. I was off balance, and then he come in with a left hook straight away. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't like rocked, but it just it caught me nice. And when I was on, like I knew where I was and stuff. As soon as I hit the ground, and it's just like defend, get get back to your feet. What I was thinking when obviously I, when I watched I watched the highlights, but what I was thinking is you got dropped quite early. Maybe you'd go into a shell. Maybe you try and coast and get through the round, but if it seemed like straight away, your mindset is, I'm putting it on him straight yeah. away. So, so like, all right, I've been dreaming about getting to the UFC for so long, yeah? You get into the UFC, you're in the cage. I'm, like, taking in the scenery while I'm fighting. Like, I wasn't in the fight, do you get what I'm saying? I'm, like, looking at the floor, looking at, the, like, the, the print around the ring and stuff. So I wasn't in the fight. So when he, he, he threw a few heavy shots towards me, uh, missed, and I was just like... I started like messing about just to try to get comfortable here, just to get comfortable, yeah. And then when he hit me, that's when it's like, all right, we're in a fight now. I woke up from that. So in, in the beginning, it's kind of not a little bit overwhelming, but you're taking in your surroundings. Mm -hmm. But then you have got that ability to switch and then turn it on and put it into business. Yeah, of course. It, it shouldn't take a big shot like that. That could have been game over. That could have been fight over. It shouldn't take a big shot like that to get in a fight. But when it's your first day, um, first UFC fight, sometimes it does take something like that to get you into the fight. Some people don't get into the fight at all because they spend so long getting used to um, the crowd and the surroundings and stuff. When you got dropped and you came back up, can you describe to me your thoughts and your feelings, your mindset when that happened? So when it first hit me, I was just, and I ended up getting in the clinch against the cage, I was just like, all right, reset, reset. Um, and then when we get back to when we get back to fighting, I'll be sweet. Like it, my legs, my legs weren't gone or nothing. I was, I was sweet. Once that first round was over, I just knew fight time now, ready to go. You got the draw in that fight. I personally thought you won, but it depends what people favour, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. Um, second fight in, how did you feel going into your second fight? A lot better. Like I, I knew what to expect. Um, I knew the level I was fighting at. Um, so everything was just everything was better. I had a decent camp. Everything was better. Everything felt good. The second guy you fought, he had a record of five and one in the UFC. Mm. Won five, lost one, right? Yeah. You you drew your first fight in the UFC, but you're undefeated. You you don't know defeat yet. Mm -hmm. But this guy's got a lot more experience on fighting on a big event and a big stage than you. Does that not overwhelm you? Not at all, really. Like I I know what level I'm at. Obviously, I knew it was good. I knew it was gonna. And well, I thought it was gonna be a tough fight. I knew that, but phew, I've not been beat so. I'm always gonna just challenge in it. Like I'm gonna always gonna see what what level I'm really at. Like I don't know. You obviously beat him in the ground and pound, and he's a grappler. Mm -hmm. How did it feel to get the win? Can you describe the feeling? Oh, uh, it's a, it's a lot like a big pressure off my shoulders, really, because you got like I had my first fight, I didn't win it, I didn't lose it, but I didn't win it. And going into my second fight, if you lose that fight, it's like you've not you've had two fights and you've not won one in the UFC. So for me, I just wanted to get that win under my belt and like now there's just. There's no stress now. I'm just going to go in and just do me and ho hopefully perform better. In terms of your UFC career, where's the end goal for you? It's not about goals dragging you all the way through. Where's the top of that? Champion, it has to be. Otherwise, there's no point. What's the point in fighting? Like, I, I want to be a champion. That's my goal. Um, so I'm going to take every necessary step to get there. Um, if I don't get there, I don't get there. But I'm always going to be trying to get there. In a way, with the kind of short amount of time that you've had and being in that life or death situation that you came through on, I would never put anything past you yeah. because you probably shouldn't even be here. Yeah, yeah. And you probably, in that amount of time, you probably shouldn't have even gone to the UFC. So if there's anyone to put a bet on, it's definitely... Exactly, so nothing fazes me. I've been, I've been through the, the worst of the worst. So 
nothing phases me, like there's nothing anybody can do to me that, that can be worse than that, do you get what I'm saying? So we, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. Would you definitely say then the experiences you had in the past kind of weathered you and toughened you to kind of face anything you're gonna in the future? Yeah, 100%, 100%, like I, that's, that's the mindset I have going into fights, like nothing, nothing can really phase me, like even if he was to lose, it's, it's just a loss, like what, do you get what I'm saying? I'm not scared of anything, like so when we get in there, when, when, once the fight's on, the fight's on. So for a lot of people, I think I asked you a similar question, but a lot of people, they, they have a dream or they have, they may have a goal, half-heartedly or something like that, but a lot of people don't ever achieve the things that they set out to achieve or maybe don't even kind of step on that path. Why do you think that is? It's life. It's life. Something like Obviously, you can set goals and not reach them, but that's just like life's never always going to go that smooth, but it's important to have goals and work towards them. You might not reach them, but as long as you've got the goals, it's, you're on the right path. So you have your goals and probably your goals may change over time. You might have been a professional footballer, now it's UFC um, featherweight champion. How important is it to be adaptable? Very important because, like I just said, the, the um, path's never always that smooth and things might happen in your life where you, can't, you can no longer p pursue that goal. So you have to be able to divert any, any time. A lot of people you'll find they, they kind of make excuses. You, you know, you could have, you got that call, you just, you've been to Jamaica, you've been eating loads of food, you're probably weighing something like, I don't know, 84 kilograms or something like that. It'd be very easy to say, oh, you know what, next one, I'll do next one. People who have excuses, what would you say to them in terms of stopping There's reaching no excuse. Goal? I don't have no excuses. Like, for me, a, a professional fighter is supposed to stay on it all year round. Anyway, that was my fault for... It's just bad timing, really. Obviously, you're going to need your holidays and stuff. But it's just bad timing for me. But it was still no excuse. I was still fit. I still, I still went the three rounds. Like, there's no excuses. Never, never excuses. What would you say to people who do have excuses? Throw the excuses out, out of the way because it's just like you're giving yourself... What's the, you just, Giving yourself, you're giving yourself an excuse to do rock, to do bad, really, and it just like there's no excuses ever. Do you believe in um, in luck or talent um, can take you really far, or is it hard work is is everything? I feel like it's a bit of everything, but you definitely need hard work to get to the top of this sport because there's so many people doing it. But you do need a bit of luck. You do need a bit of luck, definitely. I suppose that's most things in life. Anything that Anybody, you know, things that are popular or things that, you know, bring you well for success. There's a lot of people trying to get it. You can be very talented, take you to a certain point, but then I suppose the thing that separates you would be the, the hard work. Yeah. So if you if you hard work if you're working hard all the time, when the opportunities present themselves, you'd be ready for them. Do you think that's an important thing? I know you spoke about it a minute ago. <clears throat> you said you're a fighter, so you live every day like a fighter. So every day you should be ready for whatever opportunity comes your way so you can deal with it in the best way. Yeah, exactly. So if, if, for me, if I, when I, if, if I stay training consistently, if a good opportunity comes, I'll be ready for that if my body's OK. So if, when you start slacking off and stuff, you start to miss them opportunities um, and that might be your only opportunity to reach your goal. What's the best piece of advice that someone's ever given to you? Hard to say off the top of my head, but my uncle used to always give me um, advice about fighting and stuff, and just being myself and just just live, just like just live it, take every day as it comes. Really, um, don't think too far ahead into the future, and just take take on the challenges as they come. What would be the best kind of a bit of advice that you could give to somebody after kind of your experience and journey, and not just even as a as a fighter, but because you had a lot of life experience as well. Anything that you picked up from your life experience? Just always keep going. Like Life will knock you down, but always get back up and carry on fighting, always. As a fighter, you've probably been, um, and like again through your life experience, you've probably been developing kind of different characteristics of your mindset that are important to get you to where you are. What would be the most important characteristics of your mindset that have kind of took you to the UFC? It's definitely focus and hard work and just like being like resilient because I've I have come come across a lot of speed bumps even getting in the UFC like my fight wasn't declared on until the day before because of medicals and stuff and it's just like it's crazy like loads of things get thrown at you but you just got to keep going. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is read you some words out now yeah. and uh, it's not like a quick fire thing but it's just 
your interpretation of the word. So I'll say a word and then you, inter you, you give it like a, an explanation of what it means to you. Um, so the first one is fear. Fear is being scared of, be scared, be scared of something. And what would you say like for people who like over, let them overrule them? Fear can be a good thing. Fear can be a good thing. For, for me, fear, I like, I like to go into a, I like fear going into a fight because it keeps me switched on and ready. Uh, willpower. Willpower is the ability to, the willpower is the ability to like cut out the bad things, knowing um, knowing what you need to do, kind of thing. Like, say, for, say for instance, the bad food. I love food, so having the willpower not to have that food to stay healthy. And then you use that obviously to better yourself and bring you further on your journey. Um, pain. Pain is temporary. Can you can you describe a time when you've been in a lot of pain? And can you describe? Obviously, you said it's temporary. How you know that? Pain is definitely temporary because I've been through a lot in my life and it's been, it doesn't seem like it's going to, if it doesn't seem like it's um, going to end, but there's always light at the end of the tunnel. What's worse for you, emotional pain or physical pain? <sighs> Probably emotional. Definitely, yeah. You can take physical pains, yeah, what you physical do. Physical pain is just, physical pain is just a bit of pain, isn't it? Um, comfort zone. Comfort zone. Being in a, com a comfort zone is just like me being happy with what I've got now and not, not wanting to grow. How important is it to grow? Very important. If you want to achieve your goals, you have to, you have to step out of your comfort zone um, and challenge yourself. Purpose? Purpose. Having an everyday purpose would be like working towards something kind of thing. And that's kind of like your, your, your goal. What would you, what would you say your purpose is? My purpose is to do, to, to help my family out. That's my, that's what I feel my purpose is and give, to give back to like the younger generation coming up. Um, something that you probably haven't had that much experience with yet, but losing. I have though, not, not in, in terms of a fight, but in, in, in life, in those situations, yeah. But um, even in the gym, in rounds, yeah, you're losing it sometimes. But losing losing's a good thing. Losing, if you win all the time, how are you going to get better? So you're an undefeated fighter who's actually had a lot of losses, that's what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So that's, I'm, I'm not scared of losing like I've, I've lost in other situations, in it. So, but losing's a good thing at the same time. Can you think of your biggest loss? One that you kind of had to come back from, what would it be? I don't think just just life in it, just like, just little situations in life, just, just small little things. But I always I always come back. I always come back and I prove it time and time again. Risk. Risk. Big risk equals big reward. I take risks and grow. Failure. Failure. Failure is failure when you accept accept it. Failure is like, people say you can fail but try again and you'll succeed. And you genuinely believe that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep trying and you'll succeed. Because if you fail, you learn. You learn where you failed, what your, what your mistakes was and how to do better next time. As long as, you, as long as you're learning? As long as you're learning, yeah, it's not, it's not failure. You had to do that in the gym a lot of times, I suppose. All the time, all the time. Like these techniques I'll drill. I might drill all session, I might just get it at the end. I might even not get it that session, I might get it the next session, but you just got to keep, keep failing to learn. Is that also with another word I was going to ask you actually, consistency? Consistency, yeah. Consistency is just sticking to what you do and just no matter what comes at you, just keep going, keep going. Haters? Haters. Haters are people that don't want you to do well. Obviously, there's a lot of them. Um, and because when you're doing well, you're going to get a lot of haters because... Maybe you're doing better than they are. Insecurities. Insecurities. In terms of like, in terms of fighting, it's like, am I good at this or am I? I don't, I don't know how good I am at that, and it's okay to have insecurities. How do you 
obviously because the last thing you want to be thinking when you're in the arena is, am I going to be able to do this? You want to kind of feel confident, I suppose, when you're in there, but all the way through camp and stuff, it might pop into your head here and there. All the time, all the time. Like, even even in that camp, my first UFC camp, I was injured and I was watching um, the tape on the Zabero and I was just like, can I really beat this guy? There's just highlight reels of him knocking this person out, not knocking that person out. And then sometimes you just you just snap out of it. Obviously, you're always going to you're always going to have some sort of um, insecurities and wondering if you if you're good enough to even do it. But over times you're confident. Like it's just part of the part of the fight camp. But on the day, I'm always confident. Always confident. Yeah, always. Um, a mindset. Mindset. <sighs> mindset. Mindset's kind of having like a certain, for me, it's like having like a certain thought process on everything um, and just sticking to a certain way of thinking. Like for me, for me, I always come across problems and stuff, but I always keep the goal in mind. And that's, I always say that to you because that's what gets me through certain things. I think, you know what, a lot of people have problems and, and it's a good piece, piece of advice to be fair because there's many problems, not just in, in the fight game, in life, you keep saying life, yeah, but as long as you have that goal in mind, yeah. it drags you through that problem solution based kind of thinking mm -hmm. and you kind of find a way, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So I've, got, I've actually got a tiny on, on my chest there saying, um, for every dark night there's a brighter day and I always, I always live by that quote. What does that, what does that mean to you? I like that quote. For every dark night there's a brighter day, like, there's always, there's, like, hot, tough times don't last really and you're going to get through it and things are going to be okay in the end. Can you think of your toughest time to date? The toughest time to date is obviously probably when I got shot, at like the time after that really. But did he, at the time, did you think it was something you'd come back from because I know you said Yeah, of course, of course I'd come, I, I knew I'd come back from it but it was just like where am I going to go from here kind of thing and what's going to happen next kind of thing like obviously phew, Anything can happen. You, like, like I say, there's just so many routes you can take. But um, that, was, that was all my thought process was then. And obviously, you ended up taking the right route. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of people like you who probably got to 21, 22. They're not too sure like, what they're going to be doing and, and probably think, you know what, it might be too late to be a professional footballer. It might be too late to be an actor or an athlete or, or whatever. For people, people out there who might have that mindset, who might want to do something like you or reach the heights that you have in somewhere else, what would you say to them? I was thinking the same thing, to be honest. I didn't know what, what I was going to do because um, I, I went through college, I, 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 went, I studied and stuff, um, I come to get a job, coaching and stuff, I couldn't get a job because I had a, bit, I had a few little cautions on my record, I couldn't get a job and then from then it's like, what am I going to do now? So then I took that other path. So for me, it's just like, find something you're good at, find something you can earn some from and just stick to that and work hard. Stepping, like realising your dream, stepping into the UFC, into the UFC octagon and yeah. seeing, like you say, seeing the logo and everything. What was that realisation like when you got into that, into that ring? Like what was that feeling to sort of feel you achieved it in a way? So that feeling was just like crazy, like hearing the crowd, looking at, looking at all the prints on the stuff. It's just like something I've, I dreamed of for so long. So when, when I got in there, it was just like, it was surreal. It's like, it felt like I was in, in like sort of a movie kind of thing, do you know what I'm saying? It was, just, it, was it was mad, and it took me it took me a few minutes to like realize you're in a fight, like you're not here to have a look about. Do you know what I'm saying? So you you'd visioned having that sort of thing, and it's come to fruition. Amazing feeling. Yeah. Have you had the same vision holding the gold belt? Yeah, all the time. I, I play I play the UFC game actually, and obviously I'm champion and that, and I've designed my character and stuff. So. That's kind of my, my visualisation that one day I'll get there. Describe it like that feeling, man. <sighs> the feeling's like, I don't, I don't think that's like the end goal either. I, just, I think that's just part of the journey. Um, you, obviously, you get to the belt, but you've got to defend it. There's a lot of hungry lions after that. So it, it'll, be a, it'll be a mad feeling to lift that belt, though, because that, that is the dream. Uh, you said one of your biggest motivating factors is your son, mm. uh, providing for him. Uh, for me, that's, I have that similar sort of feeling, but 
it's quite a strong emotion. Like, is it like a fire in your belly, sort of thinking about providing for your family? Yeah, it's a big fire. I just want, I just want to make sure he has like the best, the best chance of growing up, the best life, and I want to be there for him. Um, obviously, I don't want him to take the path that I took either. So for me, I, I like there's no option. I've got to do well in this sport and make sure he has a proper upbringing and stuff. You have like the, you, you do have the platform and the power now to change your family's future mm. forever, and, and maybe your son's kids as, as well. Um, it's it's exciting times, very exciting times. Yeah, I do, but at the same time, I still can throw that away. So I have to stay focused. I'm not I'm not there already. People think you've made it because you get to the UFC. You haven't. You got that's when the work starts. You got the hardest fights of your life. So for me, I've just I, I'll know I'll know when I've made it when I'm champion. That's when I've made it. Um, New Year's is coming up. A lot of people looking towards starting something at New Year, sort of like New Year, New Me kind of thing. Yeah. What's your thoughts on it and like, is there any advice going into the New Year? Going into the New Year, just, just set a target, set, maybe set small targets, not even the end goals, set short -term, goal, short term goals um, and just try and meet them goals and stick to it and have the discipline. The discipline is the most important. And the last one, again, this is for sound bites, but I say it's the last because I don't know if you, do, if you are open to discussing it. Yeah. What happened that night when you got shot? Is that something you're willing to discuss? Uh, what happened? Do you want to know what happened? I just I come out of the bathroom and got shot. Not much more to it than that, but... How did you deal with it the, week, like the weeks after? Uh, so I got shot. I think I was in hospital for 10 days or something. I come out of hospital. Uh, it's just a bit of a mad time, to be honest. Like, obviously, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but it's a bit of, mad, a, bit of a mad six months go after that, and then... Uh, Things start to calm down a bit. Where about to get shot? In the face. Once. Twice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I feel like we've got like a lot of sound bites here. It's going to be twice. Is, nothing you want is that why they call you the miracle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Is there anything specific to a fire's mindset that you think is relatable to like the the the, um, the people to watch? To a fire's, I think I feel like every fighter's mindset's different. In like a lot, of, a lot of fighters. Some some fighters go in there like with an angry mindset, like kind of fired up. And some some people are like you see it all the time. Some people are like happy and joking. But I feel I feel like all fighters have got the same the same mindset in terms of consistency and having that motivation, and setting goals. Really, that's it. that's the only um, similarities that are, the fighters have. But I feel like every fighter is different, and every every fighter fights for different reasons, kind of thing. Sweet, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, really yeah good. that good? Really good yeah. Sweet. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, Thank no, you. honestly, thanks for giving your time. Yeah, of course, man.